But let's start with just, uh, you know, it was a crazy, crazy month of trading. We saw some, you know, some pretty big sell-offs and some pretty big rebounds. Are we out of the volatility woods, so to speak? Oh, <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, we, you know, the Magnificent Seven, the tech stocks, the AI world, there's still a lot of huge overvaluations there. You know, we're not that they're not going to make a lot of money, but that the anticipation is ahead of the reality of the thing. So, you know, we're going to have that going on for a while. It's going to take a long time to settle down. It's like dot com. It's like Google was a great company. Apple was a great company. They went up too much, came down, and then now they're 10 times where they were back then. You know, this always happens. Like I said, we, we, it's really easy to see when you look backwards in history that things, these things happen. It's sometimes harder when you're in it to actually see it happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. So let, let me ask you about sector rotation, though, because we've seen some pretty interesting things. I mean, some air came out of the AI world and AI-related stocks. We saw things like utilities and other things starting to pop up in the last little while. Um, do you think the AI surge has run out of steam? Like, has it peaked? It's like the dot-com boom. It's like there are going to be 90% bust and 10% that are going to make you a fortune. And the trick is to figure out which are the ones that are going to make you a fortune over the long term. Mostly, this is a case of getting ahead of itself, though. The profits in AI are phenomenal. Uh, it's the future. It's the future the same way the Internet was the future, but it didn't happen all at once. So this rotation that we're seeing right now where money's coming out of a huge uh, profits from the AI sector and the Magnificent Seven and going into other stocks is very healthy. Money does need to go to other stocks that have to invest their money and build the economy so that we can support all this fantastic new stuff. What about, um, let's talk a bit about the Fed. Um, that is coming up in, in September. Uh, and I know Jackson Hole is coming up ahead of that. We'll talk about the U.S. election that's coming out after that. But it's pretty unusual to see a Fed move before a U.S. election, but the markets are pricing in a move. <laughs> well, if you remember, Donald Trump threatened um, Jerry Powell that he, if he raises before the election, he's going to be fired. I mean, if he lowers the rates before the election, he's going to be fired because Trump sees it as helping the Democrats. Um, you know, if you, if you take that out of the equation, you say the Fed is data-driven. Is the data uh, consistent enough and pointing enough to, to give the Fed a reason to lower rates at the next meeting? I don't think so. Most people, 80, 90 percent, are, are saying, yes, they're going to lower rates at least a quarter point at the next meeting. Uh, I don't think the data is there yet. That's that's my take on it. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, we'll see. I don't know how much more data is coming out before that meeting, but uh, not a lot. I think a lot of it is, is kind of out there. Actually, there's a very big revision coming to non-farm payrolls in the U.S. There always is this time of year, probably, I think, in the next couple of days. Oh, um, oh. And they, they, they true up the non-farm payrolls for the past year. And the, the revision could be a half a million, even, even more than a half a million jobs, plus or minus. Most likely minus because um, uh, they don't count the immigrant. Immigrant labor is counted in the, in the monthly report, but isn't counted in the annual report. And that makes a huge difference, of course. Um, that's where you're going to see a, a big revision. But... It's still, I don't think it's going to be enough to move the Fed, not to change it. Interesting. All right. So we could see a big revision lower. Um, okay. Let's talk a bit about the U.S. election. I have to tell you, for most people I've talked to over the past couple of months, Phil, there's been a lot of focus on the uh, Trump Vance ticket because up until Joe Biden resigned, it was, you know, people were kind of leaning more to saying this is moving towards a coronation versus a race. Kamala Harris now is in the race, uh, you know, with uh, with Tim Waltz. It sounds like there is more of a race now. And you've got some things to look at from the perspective is what happens if we see uh, a President Kamala, come in, or President Harris, I should say, come in and and, uh, and lead the way. Oh, yeah, that's, that's I, I think, very, very much so that the uh, conservative investors, the conservative pundits and so on and so forth, they're not accepting... The fact that Trump has now lost his lead in the polls uh, is in big trouble. And, you know, the implications for this is sort of, you know, you got to look at some factors like sector rotation. Uh, Harris is all renewable energy, whereas Trump's against it, basically. Uh, health care stocks. And again, Trump is uh, against universal health care. Harris is for it. Um, fiscal policy. Uh, you know, Harris is going to want more increased government spending higher corporate taxes, higher personal taxes. These are big changes, uh, 360 from where Trump is on these things. 
the, the trade relations with China and how we do that. Harris is going to be a little bit more friendly and trying to establish trade again, like um, unlike Trump, who wants to put tariffs on everything and shut everything down. Uh, the regulations, Trump wants no regulations. And of course, Biden and Harris want to put more regulations on things, especially the financial sector and uh, polluting and obviously anything to do with global warming. And then you've got market volatility because um, just as the race seesaws back and forth, people are going to, you know, Bugs Bunny, their bets in and out, you know, like, like the Bugs Bunny audience that runs in and out of the theater. It's going to be like that. It's like that, whatever, whatever the last poll is, everybody's going to change their bets.